I'm sure my intro and this background has given it out already and some of you are so mad at me at the moment. So perhaps me so laugh because some of you are so funny. Now, I posted um, a video of going to Belgium and I said maybe, maybe not. And all of you just decided to assume that I have jack. Did you tell people that I have jackpa? No, wait, wait. In which part of my video did I tell you that I have jack? If I, I gave you too many hints. See, anybody that asks me about this whole, ah, you finally relocated from Nigeria, you finally moved to Europe. Anybody that asks me that question, I assume that you either don't watch my videos or you don't pay attention to details when you watch my videos because I gave too many hints for you to miss. Like, there were just too many hints. Like, from the fact that the immigration officer had to ask me for a return flight ticket, it meant I was coming back soon. Like, that was enough information. The fact that before I even left my house, I said it was a my first jackpot journey. It means there were going to be a second and probably a third or a fourth. Like, I never told you guys I had jackpot. Kansen Namani did the same thing. I told myself, why can't I? And you guys fell for it. Oh my god, this was so interesting. Like, hi fam, welcome back to another episode of Adulting with Bella. My name is Isabella Awan. I am a management consultant and a YouTuber based in Lagos. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you very much for always sticking with me and if this is the first time of watching any of my videos or you're just yet to subscribe to my channel please go ahead and click on the red subscribe button thereafter hit on the notification bell just down below beside the red subscribe button so that you can be among the first to get notifications of my videos whenever i drop them so guys today i'm going to be talking about how to survive in lagos like the things you need to watch out for in lagos now in my previous video i was in belgium and a lot of things came as a shock to me first video you're watching now is going to talk about all the negative things you can think about lagos i would definitely do another video because yes lagos might be stressful might be negative like might be bad but there are a lot of things you cannot compare other places to when it comes to lagos so let's give the bad news first and then wash it over with the good news in another video if you have seen my introductory video my introduction to youtube you will see that i'm less than two years in lagos and i can still consider myself a newbie because i have spent 20 something years of my life living in a different city that is totally opposite i feel like a lot of people must have struggled the same way i did and these are some of the things i struggled with when i came to lagos so lagos has this hustling spirit that doesn't even welcome you to just give you the information yes so you're in lagos however you want to use that information is on your is on you so i have a couple of things i have written down when you talk about lagos in nigeria the first thing or the first thing that comes to people's mind is traffic <laughs> traffic in lagos can never be overemphasized you know why one because you never understand it like you could be stuck in a particular place for almost 30 to 40 minutes and then when you finally move and get to the front you notice the road is very free and you start asking yourself so what was causing like what exactly was causing this traffic like you can never ever understand this. and you cannot predict the time nor the hour nor the place that see the traffic in lagos is like the coming of Christ. now not that i didn't know that lagos has traffic everybody knows that it's not a myth that lagos has traffic but until you experience lagos traffic abuja people will be inside traffic traffic for 15 minutes and will be complaining in lagos you stay in traffic for like 40 minutes like if your traffic is 20 minutes you're like oh this is fine this looks good. ah the road is clear for 20 minutes i didn't say 20 minutes driving being in traffic for 20 minutes is the road is clear honestly like until you experience it before you really understand what traffic in lagos means the next thing is cost of living in lagos hmm. oh jesus christ see lagos is the correct definition of you make the money and spend it here when you're in lagos you get higher salary you get good pay but you would spend it let me give you an example of what i mean by you would make the money and spend it you know in calabar you can 
get a good self coin for like 200k in a very good location if it's too expensive 250 you've gotten a self coin in lagos to get a mini flat that's a one bedroom apartment parlor kitchen room toilet and bathroom the 250k you're paying is just agent and agreement fee not your rent a mini flat a one bedroom apartment on the mainland between 600k to 1 million then if you go to the island getting a mini flat that's a one bedroom apartment on the island is between 1.5 to 2 million that's without your agency fee that is your annual rent then you now pay agency of about 250 to 350k for agency and agreement to get the house so you guys cost of living in lagos is something else but people can afford to pay because they make more money here in lagos and yeah people people just don't see it as a big deal the next thing i want to talk about is um social strata and um, lifestyle divide so lagos is one of those places where you could clearly see um lifestyle divide and social strata based on where you live so i live in calabar where people feel like if you live in marian if you live in Akai, places like marian akai far maybe part of um atimbo you're like rich but if you live in places like calabar south you're poor like well but at the end of the day you realize that it's a mix there are rich families that have like huge family compounds in calabar south and they live there there are poor people who live in Atimbo, broke students living in Atimbo. There are broke students living in Maria, like the back side of Maria. So, like the social strata, like the social divide is really not there. Yes, they are rich, they are poor, but I feel like somehow, somehow they live amongst themselves in Calabar. But in, in Lagos, if you want to live on the mainland, live on the mainland. If you want to live on the island, live on the island. If you want to live in mainland, sorry, island extension, you know, they are Jan, they are live there there is nothing like i am broke but i want to live on the island <laughs> you will not see apartments we will live so there is this social divide strata and it's not even because of the cost of the apartment but because if you're living on the island you will have to live the lifestyle of people on the island for example if you're li living in lake one i'm not sure it even exists but it would be hard for you to see at a bookie shop like a kiosk for you to buy maybe matches pepper maybe milk anything like anything you can buy in combine it will be hard for you to see that so if you're living on the island you know that if you want to get stuff you have to go to the supermarket and you know how it can be between the supermarkets in fact it's so bad i used to say this thing people take it like a joke it's so bad that once you say tell someone i live on the mainland they already think you're broke that's why you're living on the mainland like let's talk about insecurity in lagos I know that everywhere in Nigeria is not safe, like yes we know, but there is a level of insecurity in Lagos that I cannot explain, I don't know how to categorize, maybe let me just give you an example, like it is so easy for somebody to pocket pick you, because definitely there are like large number of people in the, in the same place at the same time, so being pocket picked is like really easy. There is this other set of people called one chance so if you use public transport a lot when you're coming to lagos when if you live in lagos or you're planning to come to lagos and your plan is to move from place to place using public transport you really need to watch out for those buses called the one chance buses because they will pick you sometimes i hear they use jazz and voodoo on people and rob every single thing out of you Sometimes it's even the person sitting beside you that will pocket pick you inside that bus. Or you're in traffic and someone just, people, you just see a group of hefty men come from the opposite direction on bike and rob like a whole roll of 50 to 70 cars and nothing is done. Like Lagos is super unsafe. The one I've actually experienced is compound theft where I don't know. So today we don't know who did this came into the compound and stole things from the compound so for example if you keep your gas cylinder outside your kitchen however if you're staying on the island island is like relatively safe so you really don't you will not have a lot to worry about because most of these cases are gated people cannot come in to hurt you there are like security cameras on the island so ahead there are police checkpoints traffic is not much so they can always get to you on time to help you and rescue you and stuff so you see people willing to pay high amount of money to stay in this secure area 
I am saying this because if you are planning to come to Lagos, you should be mindful of the place you are going to stay. Don't go and stay in the midst of chaos because you would regret it. Like people would let you break into your house when you leave for work or leave for school and rob you. Like it can be that crazy. So you need to be mindful of those places you stay, your home, mindful of the way you walk on the street. Yes, I know insecurity is everywhere, but I think insecurity in Lagos, especially in Lagos mainland, is like super super hard. People always wind up their cars when they are driving in Lagos. Not because they just want to be big boys and on AC. Remember, you cannot drive a non-AC car in Lagos because you have to wind up. If you wind down your glass and drive on them and land, I'm sorry, the likelihood of being robbed is really, really, really hard. Like, it's really hard. So, yes, insecurity is like another thing in Lagos. The next thing that came as a shock to me in Lagos is the aggressiveness in this state. Like, I'm not going to call it city because it's the whole state. The aggressiveness is just too much. Everything is aggressive. Even corporate life is aggressive. Like, it is survival of the fittest. I'm not joking with you. Having social life is survival of the fittest. What do I mean? If you go to clubs and you don't go on time or you don't have connect, you will not even see space to stand in the club. I'm not fucking kidding with you. Like, every people are so aggressive with that. Even driving. Oh my god. Any little thing, somebody is abusing you. Why? Like, Olori Guruku. Um, what's the other one they like saying? Ati Wereni. Like, why? Like, any little thing, fla honking. Boom, boom, boom. Why? Why are you so aggressive? Like, even when they are driving, maybe you're coming out at a junction, you cannot say, oh, let me wait, let this line pass, and I join. No, you have to, like, go in, and if not, nobody will create space for you to pass. Cross it, oh my god, my, my friends know me for this. I am always so paranoid crossing the highway. Like, I'd rather try to wait there is a pedestrian bridge and just take the pedestrian because crossing the express in Lagos <laughs> is not for me. It looks like a mini marathon. Like a car is coming and people are just running. Oh, no, that can never be me. Like, I get so scared. Like, if I want to cross the road, I literally pray like 10 times <laughs> before I even make the attempt. The next thing that is really shocking about Lagos is price differentiation when it comes to business. Like, you know, where I'm coming from, if you want to get you stuff, you go to the like common market and you get those things at very cheap rate. Like, very cheap rate. But if you want to be classy and bougie, go to the, um, you go to the, to the clothes stores and the boutiques and you get those things there. But in Lagos, <laughs> if you carry iPhone and enter Balogu market, they will tell you a jean trouser is Nike and tell somebody else that that same jean trouser is four five. Why? Because they size you up and do differential pricing for you. So you self have to be wise. See, Lagos is the only place where you think you're a street, but streets will still run you streets. <laughs> Let me give you this. I went to market to buy this jean trouser one day. And when I went, get by market. This guy told me the trouser was 7k. That ah, this is top jean. You cannot say, you know, they wash this and that, that, that. The guy bobo me, bobo me. So he told me seven k. I was like, ah, this is above my budget. Okay. I came with three five. The guy said, no, ah, no, be this kind of jean. They sell three five. You want to see three five G? I will show you three five G. I don't tell you, no, I like this particular jean. How much are you selling for me last? At the end of the day, I bought that jean for 4,000 naira. And I got home and I was so excited telling my flatmates that this jean was 7k. But I bought it at a rate like at 60%. I got like 40% discount. And my flatmates were like, ah, this same jean that they got for 2,500. And I'm like, what? See, streets will run you streets inside this Lagos. So the motto of saying your eye is real. If you go to the market and your budget for that thing is 1.5, don't move from it. If the person does not agree to sell for you, just walk out, go to another market, go to another store. After all, the person is not the only one selling that particular thing in that market. If the price you had priced the person is really good, like it's really good, trust me, they will call you back. You know that somebody said, wise people in Lagos, if they go to buy something and they tell them 6000 they price it for 3000 and the guy said, mm, okay, bring the money. You know what they do? They check their pockets and be like, ah, 
I don't even get the 3,000 or 2,000 day. You know, go sell them for 2K. Because for the guy to accept 3,000 easily, it means he's still cheating you. That's the idea about it. And finally, nightlife in Lagos is something else. You know how people are like, oh, we want to go out at night and this part is starting by 7 and by 10 is done. No, nightlife in Lagos is starting by 10.30. It's 10.30 you're leaving your house, you still need to get there. Then by 11, that's when the party is starting. So if you are a clubber and you go to club by 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, you're a learner. Clubbers enter the club by 11 p.m. That's, that's where club starts. So the nightlife in Lagos runs to like 4 a.m. And you would see, and the funny thing is, you think, oh, it's loose people that go to club in Lagos. No, your boss is in that club. I'm sorry. That smart nerd girl that wears glasses is that club. She put her glasses one side and wore contacts. And she's looking all hot and sexy. So when you go to club, you don't think everybody in the club are like runs babes. They are like corporate girls there. They are CEOs, like some big importers, exporters in the club. So nightlife in Lagos is amazing. Like it is wow. By 11 p.m. you still see people walking on the street. A couple of times this year I have left the office by 10.30 and it was easy to find both. I came back and nothing happened. People leave the club by 3 a.m. on Sunday. That's Monday morning and get to the office by 7.30, 8 o'clock the next morning. And they are fine. I'm like, you guys are amazing. It's a miracle. It's, it's a thing of wonder. But yes, next life is really, really strong in Lagos. So, guys, these are like a couple of things that really shocked me about Lagos. And I'm like, mm, some of them are not so bad. Some of them are like, ooh, I didn't know it was like this kind of thing. And some of them are like, oh my God, I'm going to die because of this thing. So if you're new in Lagos, or maybe not new, you lived in another city and you moved into Lagos, or you were in Lagos and you moved to another city, can you tell me some of the things that you find different and intriguing about Lagos? Like, just comment down below. Tell me the things about Lagos that you're like, mm -mm, can never happen in any other place except Lagos. This one is strictly reserved for Lagosians. So let's talk about those things in the comment section, how you um, coped with them, how it really stressed you out just to have the next person out there that is planning to move to Lagos to like praises or herself up for what to expect. People don't have to come into this thing with shock because there is information everywhere. So let's spread the information. Let's talk about the social culture, social culture and economic shocks in Lagos in the comment section. Thank you guys for watching today. See you next time on another episode of Lagos. And please, I am back in Nigeria. Let's see you next time. Bye for now.